Lord and soon coming Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to thank God for this day. Uh, we are going to share today from the book, from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 23, and the verse is 42. Luke chapter 23, verse 42. The Bible reads, Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Our kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you this morning for your word again. And we ask that you may speak to us this morning in a very special way. It is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. At the cross, we find Jesus there with two thieves. And the Bible tells us that the thief on the left, he says to Jesus, if if, if you are the Messiah, uh, save yourself and uh, save us also. He says uh, something that some of us would probably have said in a situation like that. He turns to Jesus, he says, if you are the Messiah, save yourself and, and, and save us as well. And the thief on the right rebukes the thief on the left, uh, saying, do you not fear God? Because me and you, what we are getting here, we, we deserve it because of the things that we have done. We, we are not given the names of these two thieves. Mm -hmm. uh, the thief on the right rebukes the thief on the left. He says, me and you, this man has done nothing amiss. But me and you, we deserve what we are getting here. And then the Bible says he then turns to Jesus and he says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uh, that's the short message that the thief um, uh, sends to Jesus. He says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uh, I just want to share with us a few things from what I gather from verse 40, 42. And uh, number one, it is that the thief at the cross recognized Jesus as king. You see, people around the cross had written Jesus Christ off. People around the cross said were mocking Jesus Christ, but the thief was able to recognize him as king. Jesus had thorns on his head, nails on his hand. He looked nothing like a Messiah, but the thief on the right recognizes him as king. A thief at the cross, brothers and sisters, believed in the intercessory ministry of Jesus Christ. We touched on it yesterday, uh, that we have a man on the inside, uh, the thief at the cross, believed in the intercessory ministry of Jesus Christ. The thief at the cross, brothers and sisters, believed uh, that Jesus has a kingdom. Uh, he says uh, some way in his word uh, that let not your hearts be troubled believe in God uh, and believe also in me for in my father's house uh, are many mentions if it were not so I would have told you but I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you I will come and to receive you so that where I am you may be also the thief uh, believed uh, that Jesus has a kingdom the thief uh, at the cross believed uh, uh, that in the resurrection of Jesus Christ the thief uh, believed that Jesus would resurrect. Now this, the thief says this on Friday. He says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus is hanging on the cross. Jesus is dying. But the thief looks at him and he says to him, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So the thief believed that this Jesus who was dying on the cross would resurrect. And in fact, the Bible puts it well. The Bible says early on Sunday morning, Mary and the women were going to the tomb of Jesus Christ. Christ. On their way to the tomb of Jesus Christ to clean the body of Jesus Christ, they start talking one to another and they say, but who will roll the stone away for us? For we are just women. We are not capable of rolling the stone away. And the Bible says that when they reached the tomb of Jesus Christ, the stone had been rolled away and men appears and says to the ladies, women, what are you doing? What are you doing in this place? Why search for the living amongst the dead? 
He is a reason. He is a not here. The thief believed in the resurrection on Friday. You see, on Friday, it did not look like it, but the thief believed that this Jesus who was hanging on the cross would resurrect. The thief had hope that this Jesus who was hanging on the tree would resurrect someday, my brothers and sisters. Maybe you're also listening to this message. You're also going through a Friday experience. Things are not promising. You're going through a Friday experience. Things are falling apart. You're going through a Friday experience. People around you are making fun of you. Everybody is mocking you. I want to say to you this morning, my brother, hold on a little while longer. Sunday is coming. Hold on. That's why the Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Hold on. Don't you give up. It might be Friday today, but I want to let you know Sunday is coming. There might be nails on your head, scars all over your face, stones on your head, and you feel like giving up, but my brother, my sister, hold on, Sunday is coming, the God that we serve, the God that we pray to, is a faithful God, Sunday is coming, a story is told of a young man who was reading the book of Job, he was reading the book of Job. After reading the, he was reading the book of Job. He started with the first few chapters of the book of Job. You know the story of Job. He he starts losing everything. He starts losing his children. He loses his property. He loses a lot of things. So the boy stops at chapter five and he throws away his Bible and he goes to his father and he says to his father, I've been going through the book of Job and, and I don't understand what kind of a, a God we serve. And the father says, son, what do you mean you don't understand what kind of a God we serve? The boy says, I've been going through the book of Job and, and, and how could God do such to a faithful man like Job? And the father says to his son, but son, tell me, did you finish reading the book of Job? The boy says to his father, I stopped at chapter 5. And the father says to his son, son, go and read chapter 42 and come back to me and tell me what kind of God we serve. The boy goes back to his room, goes straight to chapter 42 after reading chapter 42. And in the book of Job chapter 42, that's where God gives Job back everything. The enemy had taken, back, had taken from him and doubled. So the boy goes back to chapter 1. Job starts losing stuff in chapter 1. And the boy starts preaching now and he says job don't give up chapter 42 is coming job gets sick the boy says job don't give up your chapter 42 is coming his wife comes to job and says to job oh job cast your god and die job says don't listen to her job chapter 42 is coming my brother my sister don't give up chapter 42 is around the corner Things might not be promising right now, but your chapter 42 is coming. The God that we serve, the God who is on our side, is a faithful God. Our chapter 42 is coming. Sunday is coming, my brother, my sister. I don't know where you stand. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what people are saying about you. They, have, they may have written you off, but your chapter 42 is coming. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Chapter 42 is coming. The thief on that Friday looks at Jesus. Thorns on his head, nails on his hand. He says, this man, this man, yes, on Friday, He's hanging on the street, but this man, he's coming back from this thing. It's not over. This man is going to come back to the thief believed in the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. And the thief, one last thing I want to share with us is that the thief on the cross believed in the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's why he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The thief at the cross recognized Jesus as king. The thief at the cross believed that Jesus has a kingdom. The thief at the cross believed in the intercessory ministry of Jesus Christ. The thief at the cross believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The thief at the cross believed in the second coming of Jesus Christ. And he believed all this on that fateful Friday 
the thief believed in Jesus Christ. When people thought it was all over, Jesus was finished. He was done. The thief recognized him as king. You see, at the cross, it looked like Jesus had lost control. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me share this with you again. The, the, the thief at the cross, it, when it looked like Jesus had lost control, when it looked like he was finished, he was done, the thief looks at him. He says, but this man, he still remains remains in control. You see, you might be faced with the situation where it looks like heaven has lost control. I want to remind you, my brother, my sister, that God is still in control. He has not lost control. That's why he promises, he says in his word, be still and know that I am God. He's not lost control. He's still very much in control. You might not have money to pay tuition for your children. But this morning, let me remind you that Jesus is still in control. This morning, you might be listening to this message with a rich point. Give up. I want to let you know, my brother, my sister, that God is still in control. It may not look like it. It may not feel like it, but he's still seated on the throne and he's still got the whole world in his head. He's still running the show. The Lord has not lost control. Thief believed in him. See, in a situation where all visible power on display on that Friday, in a situation where all visible power on display belonged to the men on the ground. See, because it was the Roman soldiers that were calling the shots. In a situation where all visible power on display belonged to the men on the ground, the thief makes an appeal but his appeal is not to the men on the ground, but his appeal is to a dying man. Let me, let, let me say that one again. In a situation where all visible power on display belonged to the men on the ground, the thief makes an appeal, but his appeal is not to the men that seemed to be in charge. His appeal is to a man who has stones on his head. The thief makes an appeal. He appeals to a dying man. Because he believed that this man, it may look like he's lost control, but this man remains in control. He's still got the whole world in his hand. He's not lost control. Let me close it with the story. Story is told of a young man, an Adventist young man, who was a deacon in the Adventist church. This young man at church, uh, he also supported a team by the name of Orlando Pirates. He loved uh, this team, and he supported the team very much. Uh, so on uh, one, one Saturday afternoon, Orlando Pirates was was playing Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, so this this now this is a big game. It's a derby, and this young man, because he's an Adventist and he's a deacon at church, he he, he says to his friends, "I I will not be able to watch the game, but I I request that you record the game for me." So that after after church, I can watch this game. So the young man goes to church. And then in the afternoon, he's still at church. After church, he goes home. When he gets home, his friends had recorded the, the game. And the game had ended 3-0 in favor of Orlando Pirates. Uh, but the young man sits on his couch to watch the game. As he's watching the game, Kaiser Chiefs was playing very well. Look, It looked like they were going to score at any time. Out of frustration, this young man starts a sh shouting at the Orlando Pirates players. The friends would come over and they say to this young man, brother, relax. The score is 3-0. When Kaiser Chiefs were playing in the Orlando Pirates half, uh, dangerously, looking like threatening, looking to score at any time, the young man out of frustration would shout at the Orlando Pirates players, but again, the friends would come over and say to him, brother, relax. The score is 3-0. Orlando Pirates won this thing 3-0. My brothers and sisters, before I pray with you, I want to let you know that the score of this game is 3-0. Oh, remember, in heaven, the Bible says war broke out in heaven and Lucifer fought against the Lord. The Bible tells us that he was defeated in heaven. He was thrown down. That was the first goal. Oh, you see, the second goal was caught at the cross. You see, on Friday, the devil thought he had equalized. But the Bible says early 
on Sunday morning, the women at the tomb of Jesus Christ, the man says to them, woman, what are you doing in this place? Why search for the living amongst the dead? He is a reason he is not here. And that was the second goal. The third goal, my brother, my sisters, uh, because we walk by faith and not by sight, the third goal will be scored when the Son of Man comes the second time. The score of this game is 3-0. We might be struggling. We might, things might be falling apart. It might look like the devil has got the upper hand. But my brother, don't be misled. The score of this game is 3-0. There is no way the devil is coming back in, in this thing we are not fighting for victory but we are fighting from victory the victory is ours in christ jesus yeah. the soul is three nil and there's no Thank way the you. devil yeah. is coming back he Thank is you. a faithful god the soul is three nil. may the lord bless the reading of his word let us pray our kind and most gracious heavenly father we thank you for your word and just thank you heavenly father for the reminder that you are a faithful god that some of us might be going through a Friday experience, but you still remain faithful. You will carry us until that Sunday. May we hold on and not give up and trust in your word that our Sunday is coming. It is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.